Okay. Who wrote the law of Moses with all its commandments, such as the punishment for adultery? Yahweh God. How? Exodus 31, 18. When he had finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses the two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone written by the finger of God. Man, why like this, man? Deuteronomy 9, 10. Deuteronomy 9, 10. And Yahweh gave me the two tablets of stone written by the finger of God. Who wrote all the commandments of Moses, such as punishment for adultery? God, Yahweh. How? By the finger of God. And on them were all the words which Yahweh had spoken with you at the mountain from the midst of the fire and the end of the assembly. What is the punishment for adulterers? Leviticus 20.10. If there is a man who commits adultery with another man's wife, one who commits adultery with his friend's wife, the adulterer and the adulterer shall surely be put to death. Now notice, you got to bring both the adulterer and adulteress and put them to death. You don't just bring one guilty party. All right? You understand? If you know someone caught, is caught in adultery, then you know who that person committed adultery with. You got to bring them both. Now watch. Keep in mind that at the time of Jesus, the Jews could not inflict capital punishment. They had no right to put people to death because they're under Roman rule. And if they took the law into their hands, they would be killed. Keep that in mind. That means at the time of Jesus, if you caught people commit adultery, you cannot kill them because you're under Roman rule. Keep this in mind. Now, remember what you just read. The punishment is to take both the adulterer and adulteress and put them to death. These are the laws that God wrote with his finger. By the finger of God. Deuteronomy 9.10 and Exodus 31.18. Written by the finger of God. Now, do you want to see John... Showing you Jesus' claim to the Almighty God, Yahweh, the God of Israel, the God of Moses who gave the commands. If you have eyes to see and see what the scripture says, brother, take it easy. We got it. Glory to Jesus. She's alive with the Lord. Take it easy. Stay focused, brother. Right? His grandmother, she's about to die. She saw Jesus. Jesus appeared to her. She rejoiced, elated. She's with the Lord. Now let's focus on glorifying the Lord Jesus who saved your grandmother. Take it easy. Take it easy, man. All right. Now, John 7, 53, 8, 11, the pericope, adultery. Woman caught in adultery. Remember what the law said? If she's caught in adultery, they know the man she committed adultery with. So they're supposed to bring both of them. We're going to go deep. Don't be distracted. Okay? Everyone went to his home. Don't be distracted. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives early in the morning. He came again into the temple. And all the people were coming to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery, and having set her in the center of the court. Now notice, if they caught her in adultery, they know the man, right? Notice they didn't bring the man. Notice they're already in sin. Notice. They know the law. They were supposed to bring the man and the woman. If they caught her in adultery, that means they know who the man is. That means if they really believed the law, they would have brought both of them. Notice they're already in violation of the law because they bring the woman, not the man. So they're already in sin and they know it. They are already in violation of the law. So this shows you they're hypocrites. Exactly, Katrina. But now watch what they're trying to do. They said to him, teacher, this woman has been caught in adultery, meaning they know the man in the very act. Now, in the law of Moses, in the law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. No, it commanded you to stone both the woman and the men. What then do you say? You hypocrites. The law says stone them both. If you know she committed adultery, you know the man. Where's the man? So they're already sinning against the law of Moses. And Jesus knows this. Now, remember how God gave the law to Moses with these commands. He wrote it with his finger. 
They were saying this to test him so that they might have evidence to accuse him. Now, let me explain to you their motive. If Jesus said, kill her, then they can go to the Roman authorities and saying, he's inciting rebellion against Rome. He's telling us to kill people even though we're forbidden and get him in trouble. Do you understand what they're trying to do? You with me there? If he says, kill her, they'll go to Roman authorities. Look, this man is inciting mob action to go against Roman rule because he knows we can't put anyone to death. But now watch the flip side. If he says, don't kill her, ah, you false prophet. How dare you contradict Moses? No true prophet would contradict Moses. You see how they're trying to set him up? But they don't know who this man is. He's the God of Moses who became flesh. Because now watch what he does. Tell me if this sounds familiar. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground. You see that physical act? The Lord stooped down and wrote with his finger this physical act as a way of showing us who have eyes to see and ears to hear who he is. Why did you think John says he wrote on the ground with his finger? Because this is John's way of saying they're trying to test the very God who wrote this very law for Moses with his finger. And Yahweh gave me the two tablets of stone written by the finger on. You see why he did that? He gave Moses two tablets of stone. Written by the finger of God. You see why Jesus did this? This was Jesus' way for those who have eyes to see and ears to see by the Spirit of identifying himself as the God who actually gave these commands. The very commands they're now trying to use against him. As if they know the law better than the one who gave it. Angela, the word Mary Magdalene does not appear there. If you can show me where it says Mary Magdalene, I'll give you $10,000. Chime in less, sister, and just listen. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground. Did it sink in before I move on? I don't want to move on until it sinks in. But now, watch how deep it gets. But when they persisted in asking him, he straightened up and said to them, let him who's without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. Now, watch. The second time, John doesn't tell us he wrote with his finger. It says, and he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Now, this is significant too, but do not lose focus. The first time, we're told he wrote with his finger on the ground. Second time, that's not stated. There's a reason why. Now notice the Lord says, all right, you without sin, you be the first one to cast a stone at her. Now notice no one dared to stone her saying, well, I'm without sin to defy Christ. You know why they didn't? And said when they heard it, they began to go out one by one, begin with the older ones, and he was left alone. And the woman, where she was in the center of court, you know why they walked away? You know why no one took him up on the challenge? You guys want, let me see if you're paying attention. You know why no one took him up on the challenge? Anyone have an idea? He's saying, if you're without sin, go ahead. How do they break the law? I know they broke the law, but how would he have caught them and saying, you hypocrites, you have broken the law? No, not that. No, he didn't know there's a, you're not paying attention. This is what happens when you do not pay attention except this man right here. He got it. You got it. You got it. These guys are getting it. Bam. You got it. Now you're paying attention. Bam. See, you. the rest of you are not paying attention. Bam. 
No, Byzantine. Bam! No, the rest of you are not paying attention. Chang, you're a special kind of stupid. You know that, right? Don't take, don't be offended. Bam! Bam! I love you guys. See, the rest of you are not paying attention. Bam, Lojalo. I'm proud of you. No, gentle warrior. You're a special kind of stupid. It's okay. Don't be offended. Bam. All of you got it. See, this is what happens when you pretend to be paying attention. Did I not tell you they're already in sin because the law says bring the man and woman. They brought the woman, but not the man. They were already in sin. Hello. I'm going to rebuke you and insult you until you learn to pay attention. They were in sin, and they knew they were in sin because the law says bring the man and the woman. They only brought the woman. That's how Jesus caught them. And he would have used that against them. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hypocrites. Where's the man? Doesn't law Moses say bring the man and the woman? By not bringing the man and hiding the man, you will have sinned against the law, you hypocrites. Did it now sink in? Can you pay better attention next time? Did you forget that I said that? If they knew the woman committed adultery, they know the man. Why did they bring the woman, not the man? When if you were paying attention, I showed you. Leviticus 20.10. If there's a man who commits adultery with another woman, another man's wife, one who commits adultery with his friend's wife, the adulterer, and those who shall surely be put to death. Do you understand? They were already in sin. This is why none of them dare to stone her because they knew he would bust them. Did it sink in now? Did you get the point? It's okay, Solution. We're all a special kind of stupid. We'll pray the Spirit continues to teach me, learn new things so you can learn. All right. Did you catch it? This is how the Lord busted them and made them look stupid. But do you see the first act? Why is Jesus writing on the ground with his finger? You understand what John is trying to show you? Amen. I love that. All right. Why is he writing on the ground with his finger? Because this is Jesus' way. Of saying, you know who I am? I'm the God who wrote these laws on the tablets for Moses with my finger. And now you want to use my own law against me? All right, now watch the second act and its significance. But when they persisted in asking, he straightened up and said, Let him who's without sin among you be the first to, th to throw stone at her. Now here, he doesn't mention that Jesus wrote his finger with his finger. I'm going to show you why that's significant. And wrote on the ground. Now, notice, they walk away embarrassed and ashamed, humiliated, those who hate him, instead of turning to him in repentance, right? So when he stoops down to write on the ground, they walk away in shame, disgraced, humiliated, instead of turning to him and asking for forgiveness, right? Watch this connection. They began to go out one by one, beginning with the older ones, and he was left alone. They walked away in disgrace, humiliation, instead of turning to him for repentance, and he wrote on the ground. Now watch the second connection. You ready? Jeremiah 17, 13. Watch the second connection. His enemies, disgraced and embarrassed, and walk away and abandon him instead of turning to him. Now watch here. Jeremiah 17, 13. O Yahweh, the hope of Israel, all who forsake you will be put to shame. Didn't he just shame them and humiliate them because they don't believe in him? Those who turn away on earth will be written down because they have forsaken the fountain of living water, even Yahweh. Do you see? 
Those who forsake Yahweh, he will put to shame. Those who turn away on the earth will be written down. Is it a coincidence that Jesus was writing on the ground, the earth, as those who were put to shame forsook him and turned away? Now, don't get too into assuming what he's writing. Now, Sonia, be careful. That doesn't mean he's writing their names. That doesn't mean he's writing their sins. That's not the point. The point is that Jesus is writing on the ground with his finger and then writing on the ground. These physical acts are meant to connect him with Yahweh of Jeremiah 17, 13 and the God who wrote the law for Moses with his finger. Do you see who Jesus just made himself out to be? Nate, you know you got to get out of here, right? Get Nate out of here, please. Don't come back. Go to Mike Winger. When he asks stupid questions, then I got to treat you as you are. Get him out of here. Not only that he wrote the law, by stooping to the ground and writing on the earth, after shaming his enemies who forsake him, he was showing that he is Yahweh, the fountain of living water. No, Lanjano, don't overdo it before I have to block you. Don't read too much into it. Dread, stop overdoing it and reading too much into it. All you're supposed to see is him writing on the ground with his finger, writing. He's meant to connect him with the God of Moses and the God of Jeremiah. That's it. Stop. Oh, well, he's probably writing the law. No, he's writing your social security number. Don't go overboard. Everyone with me there? Do you now understand the very chapter this pagan Mohammedan stone kisser quoted is the chapter where Jesus claims to be Yahweh God, the Almighty God, Yahweh, who's not the Father, God who became flesh, the God of Abraham, the God of Moses, the God of Jeremiah? You see? In this chapter, Jesus claimed to be the God of Moses, because he gave the law, the God of Jeremiah, and the God of Abraham. If you understand the Old Testament, 